It is often asked, out of all the cryptids that have ever lived, which one is the scariest? And most people always respond with that old typical Bigfoot. But I think y'all are forgetting just how scary the canines of the cryptid world can be, especially the Kentucky Hellhound. Having the evil word hell in its name, this beast is truly a force to be reckoned with. And the Ames team sure found that out when they went after him way back in 2014. Season 2, Episode 1. The Kentucky Hellhound roams the hollers and hills of Pike County, Kentucky. And by God, he's a fearsome looking son of a bee. He's not quite like any normal dog you might find in the woods either. He's got a thick coat of blue fur. Yeah, you heard it correct. Blue. It's a real dark looking blue though. Now lucky for him, he's nocturnal. Which means he's up all night and sleeps all day. So it makes it hard for him to be seen. But ain't that the case for all these cryptids? If he was caught walking around in the daytime, oh, I tell ya, that'd be bad news for him because he'd be sticking out like a sore thumb. He's got an extra long mane with hair standing up all the way down his back. Damn, he gives me the shivers. This varmint measures from around 5 to 6 and a half feet long, 4 feet tall to the shoulder. The problem here is he's beginning to lose his fear of man. He's coming on farms and killing cattle through the night. By God, he'll go after a full grown one if he can, but he usually likes to just go for the youngins. Those heifers make a mighty fine food source for him, I tell you that much. Now that's a big enough problem right there. But now this thing is even going into barns and other buildings where he thinks there might be food hiding in. This ain't good for the people of Pike County. One of these days, they may just come face to face with the hellhound right inside their house. The first reported sighting of the hellhound was in 1939. Throughout the 1940s, the moonshiners were the ones reporting most of the sightings. Makes me wonder if maybe they were throwing back just a wee bit too much juice, if you know what I mean. They had a $200 bounty on the damn hellhound, and that was a lot of money back then. Still would be if everything wasn't so damn expensive. Now legend has it, there was a guy that actually killed one of them. He brought in the carcass, waiting for his reward, and by God, the moonshiners, they just couldn't decide what kind of creature it was. So the cheap bastards, they never paid him. Poor guy, did all the dirty work, didn't get no reward for it. That $200 bounty still exists to this day. Although I'd like to know, who in the hell is going to be paying you if you actually kill the real hellhound? I mean, let's face it, all that moonshiners are long gone by now. It makes me wonder, what if the Ames team were to get him and get that damn money? What would they have done with it? Who knows? But I tell you, I wouldn't doubt it one bit if they would have went down to the old Piggly Wiggly to get a lifetime supply of Beanie Weenies. That's some good eating right there. Now the Ames team, of course, they want to find out more information on the hellhound. So they meet with this old cattle farmer named Billy. He says he remembers hearing stories of the beast while he was growing up down there in Old Pike County, but he never really believed any of them to be true. After this encounter he had, though, <laughs> I assure you he believes in them now. So Billy, he raises them black Angus cows down on his farm. One night, just a few weeks before he met with the team, he says he was woken up in the middle of the night to a loud screaming. He ran outside to see a large, shadowy creature eating on one of his calves. He couldn't make out completely what kind of creature it was, but he says it was huge. Probably weighed about four to 500 pounds, if he had to guess. He was pretty fast, too. Thinks he would have had a hell of a time catching him on the damn four-wheeler. Now, luckily, Billy was fortunate enough to have a shotgun right by his side, so he ended up firing a few rounds at him. He never found no blood, though, so he's pretty sure he never hit him. Even though he was able to get him off his farm that time, there ain't nothing stopping him from coming back. Billy ends up showing the Ames team what that hellhound did to one of his calves. A huge chunk of fur was completely ripped off this poor guy. Why in the hell would the hellhound do that? Usually canines will attack their prey from the lower leg to make it hard for them to put up a fight. Not the hellhound though, he went straight for the hide. It almost seems like this hellhound was just torturing the cow just for fun. The Ames team sure was shocked to see this. That's when it really became clear to them that this hellhound is no joke. He's a real damn threat, and it wouldn't take much for him to rip apart one of them, just like he did to that poor little cow. Now the Ames team, they gotta be extra careful on this first night investigation, because usually when canines smell or see a human in the woods, they go the opposite direction. They want nothing to do with them, but not this hellhound. He, on the other hand, has completely lost his fear of man, and he don't care if they're in the woods. He'll go right up to them, which worries the team that he may even try to attack. I'm sure he'd like to take a big old chunk out of Buck's rear end. <laughs> Well anyway, out in the woods, the Ames team ends up hearing quite a bit of rustling in the leaves, but they're not quite sure what's out there with them. It very well could possibly be the hellhound, but they're not certain, that is, until they end up finding this old duck blind. Buck opens up the door, and right inside they find blood everywhere, with an old cow hoof on the ground. I assure you it was that old hellhound in there, polishing off another one of Billy's cows, and a full grown one this time. He must have killed it down on the farm, then dragged it on over to the blind so he'd be hidden. Let me tell you something. This damn hellhound is as smart as he is sneaky. Now it's time for Willie to get started on his trap for old Mr. Hellhound. This may just be one of the most unique traps Brother Willie has ever designed, I tell you. 
It's a bamboo cage trap, and like the name implies, it uses bamboo of all things to make it good and strong. Now I don't know about you guys, but I sure as hell never knew that bamboo grew naturally throughout Kentucky. It must be like a panda bear's paradise up there. Primo! Bamboo is the perfect material to build this trap out of, because not only is it super strong, but it also doesn't have no smell to it, just like corn stalk, which means the hellhound with that good old sniffer he's got won't be able to smell it and know it's a trap. Now the cage part of the trap is going to be a giant 12 by 12 box, measuring about 10 feet tall. It's going to be suspended between two trees and lifted high up in the air. Then Brother Willie's going to have a pedal trigger right in the dead center of it, hooked up to a long rope, which is where a big old piece of beef is going to be hanging from. Once that cryptid canine grabs a bite of that bait, he'll trip the pedal trigger off and that damn bamboo cage trap will fall right down over top of him. Hoorah! That's what I'm talking about. Later on, the Ames team meets with another eyewitness of the Hellhound, a farmer named Drew. Drew says he was down in the woods scouting some locations for deer season, and that's when he saw what he thinks was the Hellhound, up there near his pump station. The second that canine spotted Drew, he took off right towards his house, down near his cornfield. In terms of appearance, the only thing Drew could recall is the head. It wasn't quite like a bear, but more like a dog, or even a wolf. Now, Drew grew up in Pike County, and by God, he's heard his fair share of stories about the Kentucky Hellhound. He's worried for the safety of his family and his farm. As he's recalling his encounter, he says he remembers hearing this really loud sound, like something exploded at the pump house. Now luckily, Drew had his old video camera up there with him, so he took it out and started filming. You can clearly see from the video a huge dark creature moving from the pump house down the hill into the cornfields. You can even see the blue on him. It's as scary as hell. The direction the hell on went is the perfect spot for Willie to set up his trap because that must be one of his main travel routes. After Willie and Wild Bill are finished rigging the trap up in the trees, that's when they see a creature shaking a bush around way off in the corner of the field. It's thrashing the hell out of it. So just to make sure it ain't the hellhound, Wild Bill takes off running right towards it. Now that old marine was getting down range, but when he got to the spot he saw that critter, it was gone. Where the hell did he go? Luckily Bill was able to catch a glimpse of him at least. He said his old backside is about yay tall and yay wide, whatever the hell that means. By God, he's a big critter. Fast, too. The Ames team sure has their work cut out for them on this one. The last guy the team meets with is a farmer named Stu. He's a good old fellow who's recently had a real interesting encounter with the Kentucky Hellhound. He says he was out on his farm one day, just looking for a good place to put up a tree stand, and that's when he saw this huge swarm of crows come up off the corn. There was something in that cornfield that spooked him, shaking the corn stalks as it went. Whatever it was, it was going way too fast to be anything logical, like a coyote or a bear. But when Stu saw the creature come out of the field, he got a good glimpse of just how big he really is. It had to have been somewhere between 7 and 9 feet long, stretched out or running. He actually saw him leap across the service road and clear the whole damn thing. That's a pretty darn big service road for him to be clearing without breaking a stride. So the Ames team ends up taking a look in the cornfield, and sure enough, they find a print. A huge canine print. The biggest one any of them has ever seen. Jeff measures it, and it comes out to about 7 and a half to almost 8 inches in length. This was a damn fresh print, too. It was made probably just the day before, which means the hellhound is out there, and he could even be out there with him right now. Once Willie's trap is ready, and the trigger mechanism is all set, the team gets ready to go hunting. All it's going to take is the hellhound to just bump the trigger, any which way will do, and that old bamboo cage will come dropping down super fast, containing him inside. Now there's just one thing left to do. Test it out and see how it works. Now the question is, who's going to be the bait? Well, let's see here. The old hellhound is about 600 pounds, they say, right? Well, damn, Buckaroo's pretty close to that, so the team ends up nominating him. Unfortunately for Buckasaurus Rex, his vote don't count none. After a bunch of hooting and hollering, Buck sets the trigger off and the old trap comes down, slicker than snot on a doorknob. Buck does a few big old shoulder blocks right into the walls of the trap, and it don't budge at all. If it can contain that fat boy, it can surely contain the hellhound. So the Ames team starts to hunt for the hellhound back in the farm country, where the livestock is. They're going to try pushing him down the trails where they found his prints working their way through the cornfields, leading them right into the damn trap. At first, they hear a bunch of dogs barking way off in the distance. They're winning some, that's for sure. They hear a lot of movement in this old barn, suggesting that the hellhound might have been in there. Brother Willie decides to climb this old silo, to shine his light around and see if he can't find anything. Well, golly gee, he actually does see something. A big old creature, and it's headed right for the old barn Buck's close to. Now, Wild Bill, he sees it, and he sure is the hellhound. It runs up that way, right past them, making its way into the cornfield. As they're walking up alongside this greenhouse, they see this huge shadow from the hellhound running up alongside it, growling as it goes. He was running around in there. 
one thing's for sure, he didn't want the team to see him, which is a bit contradicting, seeing as we were told the Hellhound isn't afraid of humans. So anyway, the team gets into their side-by-sides and hightails it through the corn, leading the beast right into the trap. Or at least, that's what they thought they were doing. The corn is so damn tall, though, that the Hellhound could have been five feet in front of them, and hell, they'd never see him. They hear lots of growling coming through the corn. It's scarier than all hell. The team has to make sure they stick together, or one of them can get killed. In a panic to escape, the Hellhound comes running past Trapper, almost knocking him over. He actually hit him in the elbow. Now that's too damn close for comfort. The damn thing got away. And of course, he ran right in the opposite direction of the trap. He made a run for it into the big old timber, and down a big old cliff. He's as good as gone. It may have been an unsuccessful hunt, but at least we get to acknowledge where the team went wrong. They got all turned around in there and pushed the Hellhound out the west end when the trap was clear back there on the south side. They didn't even know. They thought they were pushing him out the right side, but hell no. It's easy to get lost in the corn, let me tell you that much. Anyhow, it seems that the Hellhound would live to be hunted another day. Now the Ames team, they know he's out there, and Trapper, Hook, and Willie, they even got to touch him, or at least be touched by him. That son of a beep has probably never been touched by a human before. And let me tell you all what we've learned about the Hellhound through this investigation. He runs right in and around these people's farms, and their barns, and even their homes. He uses these damn cornfields as his travel routes, and by God, he's a fast fella. The Ames team may not have gotten old Mr. Hellhound in the trap. They sure did put the heat on him. Trapper said it himself, they'd be back out there to hunt him again one day. One thing's for sure, the Hellhound is a no-good crippled canine, and I bet he's still roaming those Pike County hills to this very day. But anyways, y'all, I want to thank y'all for watching today's episode of Cryptid Case Files. By God, it was a good one. I sure as hell didn't know all this information about the Hellhound, and I didn't realize just how much effort Willie put into that trap to catch him. That was one of my favorite traps he's ever made, for sure. I hope y'all enjoyed, and I'll be seeing y'all next time for another one real soon. Hoorah! We're gonna catch the monsters.